what makes an organism a current. We have talked about it. Let's see how many of you remember the concept. What makes an organism a current? Give me the answer. We have talked about it. It's about something which is here. Can you tell me? Well, let me see how many of you answered it as the backbone or the vertebral column and how many of you are answering notochord. Because the correct answer is notochord. It's the presence of the notochord. So, chordates is basically the organisms which have the notochord. Okay, remember this. So, let us talk about the notochord. It's derived from the mesoderm. The layers, the three germ layers, you remember? Ecto, endo, meso. Mesoderm, it is derived from the mesoderm. Rod-like structures on the posterior side of the embryo. Mark this word. Embryo I'm talking about. Found during the embryonic development. It's found during the embryonic development. See the notochord over here? Can you see? Okay. So, here are the three layers. Ecto, endo and mesoderm. So, it's derived from the mesoderm. What? The notochord. Well, now let us talk a bit more about the chordates or rather the notochord first. Based on the presence or the absence of the notochord, animals are classified into chordates and non chordates That means organisms, animals who have the notochord, they are chordates, who do not have the notochord, they are non chordates That's simple. For example, porifera, they are non chordates we human beings are chordates and in fact to be more precise we are vertebrates. Let we will understand about this concept. Okay, so as of now we are going to talk about the chordates, right? And the important concept is the presence of notochord. Now let's see in this chordate that we are going to talk about what are the characteristic feature of these phylum chordata. Characteristic features, habitat first, where are they found? Terrestrial, we are terrestrial. Aquatic, marine, freshwater, both. Amphibians, you know amphibians, right? They can live on land as well as on water, inside water. So, terrestrial, aquatic and amphibians. Talking about the symmetry, we are bilaterally symmetrical. That means there is only one plane and in that plane, along that plane, if we cut, we'll get equal halves of the body of the organism. So we are bilaterally symmetrical. So you see, the first class we studied about the various levels at which, or rather the criteria based on which animal kingdom can be classified. Now see, we are applying those everywhere. So we are bilaterally symmetrical. Symmetry was one of the characteristic feature. Fine. Now let's talk about the lifestyle. Free living and parasitic. Oh, wait, parasitic? Parasitic animals, these animals I'm talking about, can they be parasitic? First tell me what are parasites? What are parasites? Because then only we are going to apply this concept. Give me the answer. What are parasites? It's easy. We have been studying about these since the previous sessions. Not only sessions, other chapters also. What are parasites? That means that these organisms, the take nutrition from the host organism. They take nutrition from the host organism. Fine. Yes, there are some animals which are really parasites, which are parasites. And an example here is the lamprey. And today's session, these are really interesting animals. We are going to talk extensively about the lampreys. Let's see what I have for you in today's session. So free living, of course, we human beings, we are free living animals. Lampreys, they are Parasitic. If I ask you, what is the mode of nutrition for all the animals? Mode of nutrition, if you remove just parasitic, or rather, if you just talk about the general mode of nutrition of all the animals. Remember about the biological classification chapter, there we are talked about it. Yeah? We are all autotroph or heterotroph. Give me the answer. We are all heterotrophic organisms. Fine? Okay, great. You know, these lampreys, they are, these are the parasitic fishes which are native to the northern and the western Atlantic Ocean. Fine? Okay. Can anyone tell me this? How do fishes breathe? How do fishes breathe? Do they have some special structure which 
we do not have? Let's see. Who can give me the answer? Okay, let's continue. They have gill slits. They have gill slits. Well, just note this. I'm talking about gill slits. I'm not talking about just gills. There's a difference. I'm talking about gill slits. So some fishes, some amphibians, they have gill slits. And these are used for the gas exchange. So what is the function of gill slits? Used for gas exchange. Fine. So gill slits are also present in some of the primitive chordates also. At times, gill slits are used to filter food. Filter food because of when this exchange process happens, you know, food particles can be filtered out from water. So the functions of gill slits, are you clear about it? Okay. Now, now let me amaze you with some important concept. Presence of differential gill slits and why will you be amazed to see this one? Human beings. Well, we, we had gill slits at one point of time. If I talk about our life cycle, you, me, all human beings, we had gill slits. Yes. So fishes, reptiles, birds, human beings, we all had gill slits. But the thing that you have to note here is I'm talking about the embryonic stage, not the adults. I'm talking about the embryonic stage. Now gills, fishes have gills, you know about this. You have been studying about this since your lower standard. But we don't have gills. But when we were embryos rather, we had gill slits. Fine. Okay. So that is something new that I, you have encountered today, right? Okay. Presence of pharyngeal gill slits is one of the characteristic features. Also, this is something more interesting. I like it. Presence of the post anal tail. Yes, again, I'm talking about the embryonic stage. Please note it. We human beings, well, I do not see a tail behind me, but once upon a time, we had tails. And that is during our developmental stages, embryos. So you see the post anal tail was present during the, at the embryonic stage. So all the fishes, reptiles, birds, human beings, they all have the post anal tail. That's a characteristic feature of the phylum chordata. Fine. But you know, in most of the organisms, this post anal tail is lost when they grow into the adults, like we. We now do not have the post anal tail. Fine. Okay. Great. Let's move on. So, chordates, they exhibit triploblastic organization. I'm sure by now you are well versed with the term triploblastic ectoderm, endoderm, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Fine. Okay, let's move on. They have a cavity between the elementary canal and the body. That means coelomates. It is lined by the mesoderm on all sides. We are coelomates or rather I can say the chordates. Animals belonging to the phylum chordata, they are coelomates. They are triploblastic. Now let's see about the cavities. If you talk about human beings, we have a lot of cavity cavities. Let's see. You see the thoracic cavity? You see the cranial cavity here? Do you see the spinal cavity? See the dorsal cavity. So the cranial cavity, spinal cavity, they together termed as the dorsal cavity. Do you see the pelvic cavity, abdominal cavity? Here you see the diaphragm. Heart is present where? Which cavity? In which cavity the heart? Our heart is present. It's in the thoracic cavity. Okay, fine. You understand about the cavity things? Well, now organ system level of organization. We have organ system level of organization. Quickly recall about the concept about this. Cellular level of organization. We had spoken about examples. Poriferans. Then tissue level. Then organ level. Now here we are talking about the organ system level of body organization. Fine. So what are the organ systems? Let us quickly answer it. Okay, you answer it. What are the organ systems that we have? Quickly, give me the answers. Then I'm going to show you. Quickly, one by one. Let's see. I'll give the answer first or you. Let's see. We have skeletal system. I hope you are answering. We have the muscular system. We also have the respiratory system. We then have the digestive system. 
we have the nervous system we also have the circulatory system so all these organ systems are present in our body and all this together is what we are fine okay now organ system of level of organization heart our heart is ventral now tell me what do i mean by ventral because if you're studying biology this term ventral and dorsal is very very important dorsal ventral we have been encountering this word quite a couple of times while discussing all these sessions tell me what do we mean by ventral give me the answer we have talked about it okay there are some hints in this diagram also tell me what is ventral ventral means from the front or you can say the lower part fine ventral heart dorsal means from the back or the upper part okay clear remember this because this is very important in understanding concepts in biology then only you understand the position of an organ in an, in a particular organism fine our heart is ventral fine okay let's move on closed circulatory system i'm sure now you can well and very easily relate to these terms because you understand it closed circulatory system can any one of you answer answer me what do i mean by a closed circulatory system give me the answer the hint if some of you do not know this till now the hint is here look at the screen and tell me what do i mean by a closed circulatory system and there is another thing which is called the open circulatory system what's the difference let's see who can answer it quickly closed circulatory system so closed the name suggests us that means here the blood is flowing through some blood vessels okay on the other hand in the open circulatory system blood is pumped out the organs the exchange all the exchange which happens it's basically how the organs are bathed in blood that's an open circulatory system but in closed circulatory system the blood flows continuously the circulation happens through blood vessels fine so we have the cordons have closed circulatory system central nervous system is dorsal hollow and single central nervous system is dorsal hollow and single so yes we have the uh, it consists of the brain and the spinal cord okay cns you know about this well in detail we are going to study in human physiology chapters cna central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord it's dorsal dorsal hollow and one clear okay fine if you can't relate dorsal can you relate to it if i speak about dorsal on the back okay fine now let's talk about the characteristics of the phylum chordata that distinguish it from the non chordates presence of notochord that is there in the phylum chordata you see the notochord right presence of the pharyngeal gill slits do you relate to it okay next can any one of you tell me we have been talking about it presence of post anal tail then presence of nerve cord dorsal hollow nerve cord so these are some of the differentiating characteristic features of the chordates from the non chordates 